Ladies and gentlemen, the Shrek Gaming Telecom video, we're going to be discussing AMD's new display technology, what it wants to start pushing into the consumer space. Essentially, to give you an indication of what I mean by this, it's not just the number of pixels on screen, but it would be the quality of pixels on screen. And we're also going to go over some news concerning FreeSync, uh, as well as the, I guess you could say, fiasco with the cease and desist letter with Aztec, which of course is not only impacting Fury, but also NVIDIA's, well, more specifically Gigabyte's GTX 980 series. So, let's start out with the better quality pixels. So, what do I mean by better quality pixels? Because that, that sounds a bit ambiguous, right? Well, essentially, I guess the most simple way of putting this is that a pixel isn't necessarily always created equally. Let's just say 1080p for the sake of our sanity, because as we all know, 1440p, 4K, 5K, God knows what else is coming. But as a general rule of thumb, you can have a 1080p image from, let's say for the sake of argument, Quake 3. The quality of that in terms of the color depth, in terms of the shadows, in terms of the lighting, it obviously does not match up to a game that has been created with Unreal Engine 4. I don't think I need to tell you that, that's pretty obvious, right? But, if you've been around gaming, particularly on PC for some length of time, you may recall that back in the day there wasn't actually 32-bit color. Indeed, a lot of 3D games were running with just 16 bit color which led to less than ideal image quality i mean yes it was very expensive to move from uh, 16 to 32 and in fact despite the fact that 3d effects older cards for the sake of argument the voodoo 2 the voodoo 3 simply were incapable of running 32 bit color there was actually technically 22 bit color with differing and it's a bit of a a bit of a fiasco and saga and i won't go into it in this video because it would take a lot of time to eat up a lot of time but NVIDIA were pushing 32-bit color, and AMD, of course, or back then ATI, were pushing 32-bit color. It was very expensive for rendering. Essentially, what you started to get was a greater number of colors in a scene, which was very important for lighting and so on. Now, for some time now, we've been stuck in the traditional 8 bits of color per channel. So, obviously, that would be RGB, which is obviously red, green, and blue. So, if you times 8, 8, and 8, if you're... You know, pretty simply, we've been stuck on this for some time, and it's not ideal. Now, 10 BPP isn't new. It has been around, particularly in the professional space, for a while. Um, and a lot of experts, particularly for photo manipulation and photo editing, uh, sometimes, for example, a lot of Adobe RGB, for example, with Photoshop, that type of thing, you know, it's been around, let's go with that, but it's also kind of rare to see it for consumer-based devices, but that's not what AMD want to do. What they want to do is bring HDR and larger color spaces to us, regular customers. That's actually kind of cool, actually, in my opinion. By the second half of 2016, AMD are planning to introduce FreeSync monitors which are going to be fully 10 BPP capable, which is absolutely fantastic. It means that we're going to be seeing better colors. It means that light, uh, lighting, um, particularly for images which are HDR, should theoretically have considerably more detail. One of the problems of HDR at the moment, high dynamic range, is that colors and lighting can look a little... I guess you could say washed out. It almost looks like the details have simply been blown out. If you're familiar with photo image manipulation whatsoever, it can kind of be a bit like you've played around with the levels too much. You've simply squidged, yes, that's a technical term, squidged the colors too much either to the lightness or to the darkness, and it, it just doesn't look right. You're basically missing um, certain colors that which, which should be there, which contain some of the finer detail. Now, humans technically can only actually get around 10 million colors in their own vision. Obviously, this does depend, and it's not an exact science, 
but the generally accepted number is around 7 to 10 million, some may push it up a few million more here or there, but essentially let's say that we're in the ballpark of around 10 million. Now that might sound like, well we're good, we're golden, right? Not necessarily. Um, one of the big problems is that there is what is known as tone mapping. Now what does that mean? Well, tone mapping, I guess you could say in the most simplest of terms, is the process of being able to map colours to one another. So, just for the sake of argument, let's say that you have a monitor. Well, you probably do have a monitor, but you get the general gist. The colour that you see as, let's say, green in a font may be slightly different on your screen to what someone else can see. Now, this isn't just things such as your brightness may be a little different or your contrast might be a little different or what have you, but it's also down to what the monitor can display itself. Essentially, the monitor, I guess you could say, is mapping a certain color to that. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, it could be green 131, for, but that's just for the sake of argument. Well, your monitor might not have green 131. Instead, it might only have green 132 or and 130. So it has to decide. And it's a bit of a complicated uh, subject. But for the sake of argument, it means that media, particularly games, particularly those with high degrees of lighting and contrast, should just look a lot better on your display. And that ultimately is the key. Now, it will probably take an impact in games um, in terms of the performance, particularly at the start, but as I've mentioned numerous times now, we can't just keep saying, well, we're going to have more pixels on screen, because that is not just the answer to things, to really get the type of, the type of pop, to, the type of imagery, and to produce the real life worlds that artists are trying to create in these games when they're you know mapping these colors creating these textures creating the lighting and whatever else they're doing ultimately they need the technology to really display that correctly now i did mention that amd are also moving towards better free sync display ports and hdmi so HDMI 2.0 will be coming to AMD GPUs in 2016, which is fantastic because at the moment, obviously AMD GPUs, one of the one of the, the key downsides to them is that they don't have the HDMI 2.0 support, which is very important if you do want to run a display which is HDMI driven at high resolution, once again with high uh, refresh rate, which obviously is kind of important because there's no point running I know, 30 FPS. Now, it is worth noting that, as I mentioned earlier, high dynamic range does use up more performance from the graphics card for pure rendering. However, this does have an impact in the amount of bandwidth it takes for the connection to the screen. Essentially, just like when you plug an Ethernet cable in from your modem to your PC, or when you're transferring a file from, you know, over the internet, you are using bandwidth. You have your connection runs at a certain rate. Display ports, HDMI, all of those are running very much similar technology in that they all require bandwidth. So, for the sake of argument, Display port 1.2 is going to add what is known as high bit rate free, and this is going to increase the bandwidth available to 32.4 Gbps, which is obviously enough to display higher resolution displays. And then we're going to continue and continue this with Display port 1.3. My point being that with the next generation of displays, uh, Display port 1.3 will be able to run 4K at 120Hz with SDR, but for HDR we're going to be able to run at just 60Hz, which could be a bit of a problem. But from the point of view of gamers, this is excellent, because now FreeSync over HDMI from AMD will be official. It is going to be starting in the first quarter of 2016, which is not too long away at all. And this means that we're going to be getting nice high resolution high refresh rates over HDMI, and it also means that it'll be fantastic news for gamers who are running, say, notebooks, that type of thing, with HDMI, although obviously there are 
a lot of gamers who are not necessarily going to be that interested in a free sync with notebooks anyway, simply because of the performance and levels of hardware which are used to actually game on that. Overall, this is excellent news in my opinion from the perspective of gaming, or from the perspective of anyone who really does anything colour orientated, any colour correction work, watches movies, um, even if you're running kind of a cheap, I guess you could say, uh, photo editing hardware kind of deal. So for the sake of argument, you're running a basic color correction, um, retouching photos, you're doing video editing work, all of this is really good news. Um, for even for me, because I do a lot of video editing, I do a lot of color correction, a lot of photo manipulation editing for my own personal use. So it, it just brings down the prices, but for gaming, it definitely is excellent. Finally, I would like to give a bit of a tiny update in the Cooler Master versus Ace Tech versus the World. So you might recall, just in case you're not too familiar with the incident, Cooler Master received a cease and desist letter from um, from Ace Tech. Essentially, they were found by jury to be in violation of various patents from Ace Tech. And this has trickled down the dis uh, the supply chain because now not only AMD being impacted because of the cooler which is being used in the Fury X, but also the GPUs from Gigabyte, or more specifically the GTX 980 Water Force. However, AMD have issued a bit of a statement, a tiny statement, and they have said, and I quote, We are aware that Ace Tech has sued Cooler Master. While we defer to Cooler Master regarding the details of the litigation, we understand that the jury in this case did not find the Cooler Master heatsinks currently used with Radeon Fury X infringed any of Ace Tech's patents. Hmm. Well, that's. That's a bit of a mystery, but. I guess all we can do is wait and see how this one develops, because from what I understand, Aztec are telling us yes it is, AMD is saying no it's not, so I guess... Shrug. Anyway, so pretty good news regarding the colour space. I must say I'm really happy about this, because I was... I'm really happy just generally any, any improvements to colour, any improvements to level of detail for just customers and gamers in general is absolutely excellent. I was really happy back in the day when we moved from uh, 16 to 32 and while I'm not saying that this is anywhere near as profound in terms of the color space because it's not, we definitely I think need something, a kind of a nudge towards this um, and I, I, I don't necessarily know if all games developers will take advantage of it, they probably won't, but that's kind of the point. You're giving them the leverage to do so. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I maybe learned one or two little tiny things. Well, I'd hope so anyway. I'll see you soon. Take care. Bye for now.